Welcome back to Revelation Friday, unveiling Revelation, exploring the messages of Revelation chapter one. So in Revelation chapter one, we will journey into the realm of divine revelation, where the apostle John shares profound visions he received on the island of Patmos. These visions serving as both an introduction to the book and a powerful proclamation of the magnificence and authority of Jesus Christ are not mere descriptions, but profound insights into the divine. They hold a significant place in the text, offering a unique perspective on the sacred. Here, John encounters Christ in a breathtaking display of glory, surrounded by seven golden lampstands symbolizing the seven churches. Through vivid imagery and symbolic language, Revelation 1 presents Jesus as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, affirming his internal sovereignty over all creation. As readers, we're not only invited, but encouraged and challenged to embark on a journey of understanding and interpretation. With the unveiling of the truths and the promise of the blessings that wait those who heed the words of this prophetic revelation in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to ask the Lord. And now we're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts, so lovely Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open up the eyes of our mind, and that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us apply what we learn after having conquered sinful desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, your abide. Do you with your glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages, amen. The Lord is our shepherd. My good evening, welcome back to the greatest of faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. My pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. We'll get our screen shared over. We'll get right to it. So we're just going to teach right from the Bible, right, with some notes that I've taken down. We're going to try and make this kind of quick, but a good study, right? So Revelation chapter 1, the introduction and benediction. And it says, we'll read those first three verses. And the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, the things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified and by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So we start out, right, with the revelation of Jesus Christ, right? So the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, we know in Greek, apocalypse, it means to unconceal, <coughs> unveil, or reveal. It means to reveal what wasn't known, right? Revelation was also used as an ancient coded message that must get through without falling into the wrong hands. God is also what the ultimate source of revelation. It was the son of God who revealed himself to the prophets of the Old Testament before he came flesh. The revelation concerns the age to come and also certain things that are in the past, and also from this present age and shortly takes place. It indicates that it indicates God's timing, not ours. In okay? verse two, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. So the word of God, it is the son of God, the testimony of Jesus, which means a witness concerning Jesus. The Apostle John is testifying of Christ, not Jesus testifying of himself. Bore witness? That's how you get the word martyr, right? So it's how we get the word martyr. It's persecution, not the consequence of witnessing. In Hebrews chapter 12, all things witness the truth, sealing it with their blood and death in the Father, Son. And the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Let's look at verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Beautiful. So the promise of blessings. In verse 3, it is the first of the seven blessings here in Revelation. You can also look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 13. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. And Revelation chapter 22, verse 7 and verse, and verse 14. Look at verse 4. So let's read 
4 through 8. So greeting to the seven churches. So John, to the seven churches, which are, in, which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and the firstborn from the dead and ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins and his own blood and has made us kings and priests his his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with cloud, clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So look at verse 4. So John to the seven churches, which are in Asia. So according to some ancient commentary, right? Asia, right? Some of these ancient commentaries I've been reading. They mentioned that Asia, it also meant elevated or walking, right? And it would signify a celestial fatherhood, which we all call what the universal church, right? Church tradition maintains that John was a bishop in Ephesus. And is said to be where the seven churches were. Seven also holds a significant, like a spiritual significance, meaning fullness, completeness. Indicating that the whole church fits the idea, which is in some of those ancient commentaries. We also see the Trinitarian doxology involving the Father and the Spirit. Look at verse 4. John to seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And the seven spirits who are before the throne. Let's look at verse 6. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And the Son, in verse 5. Right, in verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the earth. To so the greeting, the existing, the was, and the coming could express the Father, right? Who is in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, right? It gives Moses, I am who I am, right? The Son is in John chapter 1, verse 1, right? The Word, right? The Word was in the beginning, right? And the Holy Spirit who is to come, that was in Acts chapter 2, right? At Pentecost. It shall always be present. It could also denote the Holy One who is internally and present and exercises lordship throughout history. Let's take a look at Hebrews. So Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Chapter 13, verse 8. All right. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Beautiful. Beautiful. Seven, right, as previously mentioned, is the number of fullness and completeness. The seven spirits of God could also refer to the Holy Spirit and the gifts he offers. Or it could be the seven archangels, according to Jewish tradition, or the ones who stand before the throne of God, right? We get an idea from Tobit, chapter 12, verse 15, right? From the Orthodox Study Bible. Some of you don't have Tobit, you know, the Bible you have. You can also see 1 Enoch, chapter 20, verses 1 through 8. 1 Enoch chapter 90, verses 21 through 22, and the Testament Levi chapter 8, verse 2. Let's go back to Revelation. Let's look at verse 5, right? So verse 5. So verse 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and ruler over all the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed our sins and his own blood. So Jesus is the risen Savior, right? Here, washed, used, but in many Greek text, it reads free. The term witness, martyr, is used here again. It's also used in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Right there. And the angel of the church, 
Blas Dinius right these writings says amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of creation of God let's go back so Christ right so Christ is the authentic witness of all divine revelation and the firstborn from the dead verse 6 and he has made us kings and priests to his God his father to him glory and dominion forever and ever amen so all those who are, who are joined to the body of Christ become part of the royal priesthood, which is promised in the Old Testament. Right? Verse 8, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The Alpha, the Omega, right? The beginning, the end. And verse 9, so I'm going to read verse 9, and I'm going to stop. Verse 12, so vision of the Son of Man. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, who on the island is called Patmos for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice of a trumpet saying, I am the alpha and the omega, the first and the last. And what you see right in the book is sent it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Permagos, Thyricha, Sardis, Philadelphia, Last Alicia. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the, the island of Patmos, it was a small rocky island. It was about 40 miles off the western coast of which is modern day Turkey. And 50 miles from Ephesus. We look at verse 10. And I talk about the Lord's day, right? So let's talk about the Lord's day. So in the spirit, right? So he was in the spirit, right? In the Lord's day. This could refer to John receiving the visionary revelation, right? But perhaps he is in worship, worshiping his spirit and truth with the Lord. The Lord's day is the earliest known reference to the Christian name for Sunday. Listen attentively. According to the Didact, right? And St. Agnesius of Antioch, the name was used as a reference by early Christians to celebrate the resurrection and the Eucharist, the fulfillment of the first day of the week of the old creation. Sunday becomes the eighth day for the first day of the new creation. Now the term eighth day is also seen in 2 Enoch chapter 33, verse 1. And according to the Orthodox study Bible, inaugurates apocalyptic introduction by describing an appearance of the Lord, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's look at verses 11 and 12. And it says, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see right in the book is sent it to the seven churches, which are in Asia. And it says, then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. So the glorified Christ is saying, he is the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last identifying himself with God the Father. Seven lampstands is a church and his presence, right? Golden lampstands, the grand menorah of the temple with seven lamps, right? You can also take a look at Exodus chapter 25, verses 31 through 37. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 2, and Hebrews chapter 9, verse 2. Some of my sources come from this, this dia. This is the uh, Suspuagin, right? It's the Orthodox Study Bible. So if you have any questions, just let me know. All right. All right. So Solomon's golden lamp stands for his temple, and all, which represents the fullness and the presence of God. The seven churches of Asia, which is also found in chapters two and three here and the book of Revelation. Cool. So look at verse 13. And it says, in the midst of seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. So one like the Son of Man. It's this is, some of this is repeated in Daniel, right? In Daniel chapter 7, right? Christ called himself Son of Man. It's also in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. You can even look at in Acts chapter 7, verse 56. Stephen saw the Son of Man, right? Other parallels seen in the Old Testament and New Testament, according 
to right here that has to do with the verse that we're talking about. All right, take a look at Daniel chapter 10, verse 6, Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. He invested in high priestly garments, right? The goal he had girded is royal and priestly. Look at 14 and 14 through 16. His head and hair were, were, were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as refined in a furnace. His voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. So Christ described as God, right? And his hair, right? In verse 14. Let's look at verse 14. And his hair, and hair was like white, like wool, right? Even in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 7, talks about his hair, talks about the description, right? Even in, in 1 Enoch, chapter 46, verse 1, it right? talks about all this stuff. It's interesting, right? So let's finish this up, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and read from 17 to 20. We're going to close this out. Right? I just wanted to make this really quick, chapter one. It wasn't a whole lot to chapter one. So here we go. It says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. So when he saw him, right, he says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. So the appearance of God, right, makes us drop down. Right? But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write these things that you have seen and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. The ministry of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. So the Lord holds the seven stars rep representing the seven churches. Seeing the Lord is how John saw him was overpowering for humanity, right? Verses 17 and 18. The visions of John have to do with both present things, which are, and the future, right? Go back to my video on the introduction, right? All right, so in verse 20. And so we're going to close this out. I hope you, hope you guys enjoy this study. All right, so look at verse 20 before we close out. In the ministry of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of seven churches. The seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven churches. So here we go. The angel of the seven churches are interpreted as, one, the guardian angels of the church communities. Two, the past, pastoral leadership of these local churches. Three, a personification of the prevailing spirit of the given congregations. Four, they are simply messengers responsible for delivering the letters. Angel means heavenly or earthly messenger. And it is used over 60 times in the book of Revelation alone. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's where we'll end. We'll end this quick video. These videos will get longer right, as we dig deeper into the book of revelation chapter one is pretty easy it's pretty straightforward right take the time and hope you're taking notes of this video to look at some of these areas right like especially in enoch and the testament levi right if i had shown some of that this video would have been a lot longer but we're still in our land and we have church services right we have another one to get to this evening so i wanted to make this a quick video and try to make it as thorough, but as quick as I can. If you have any questions, please ask. And I hope you enjoy these studies. Because as we get through the book of Revelations this summer, we're going to unveil more and more and more. Right? So the studies are going to get deeper. And they're going to get more theological in depth. Right? So I hope I love you all so much. Let's close out, though. Hope you enjoyed this for the time. Not bad for the time. All right. So. All right. Get a quick blessing, quick prayer. We'll be on our way. All right, I hope you all enjoyed that. All right. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Oh Lord God, you spoke against your divine single words. You illuminate the souls of sinners, the comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as here spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Have to blame his life and conduct without reproaching Christ our Lord in our life. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. Our Father, art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The yours is the kingdom, power, glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, as sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. All right, we depart in peace. In the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. So next Friday, Re Revelation chapter 2. I love you all so much. Have a great evening.